Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery. And we'll get started here in just a minute here and um, cover a little bit of news, but mostly uh, we're going to be unpacking the charts here and looking at the Crypto Mastery indicators. So if anybody has any questions, hey, Rick, Glenn, Julie, Pirate J, Rennie, Lisa, David, private, whoever private is. And uh, I'm going to pull up the uh, chat here if you guys have any questions. Anything before we get started you guys want to talk about? And uh, otherwise, nothing really happening in the markets. Uh, just kidding. Uh, so, um, but all eyes are on the FOMC tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Going to be probably pretty quiet here today. So the uh, big fireworks will happen uh, tomorrow. So in the active trader class, uh, we'll kind of dive a little bit deeper into everything. And uh, how's my audio, by the way? Sometimes this resets. And uh, I just let Sam in. Good. Thank you, David. All right. So since I don't see any questions, we can sort of dive in. I, you know, I've learned to just go for the easy news and not dive too deep. I usually do uh, watch a little more in depth in the mornings, but for class, I like to pull it up right as we're doing it. Uh, so as I was saying, Bitcoin holding steady at 28K before Fed meeting. Um, right now, we've come up and mostly filled that uh, FOM, sorry, the CME gap uh, that we were waiting on. We'll look at that chart here in a minute. Nothing more really to unpack here. Let's see. Well, I guess there could be some things. Top stories. You know, I'm trying to get an overall feel. You guys are probably like, well, I have a much better source of news. And, you know, the biggest stories tend to filter up to the top. I could uh, used to spend an hour or so looking at everything before class. But, you know, the simple stories, the rest of the charts tell us. We want to see what the big news is. So 28,000, we said that would go up there, probably hit 30,000. And, um, then we'll see either we'll get either we'll get a pullback or we'll shoot up higher i think we could rock it up to 48 to 52k which would be the the uh, golden pocket retracement so we'll look at that and um so what is really interesting though is you know the markets are rallying and big bets are being placed because people think that the fed won't raise tomorrow and i don't know i don't think that's necessarily true i think they still raise a quarter of a point and um you know keep things keep a handle on things you know they're silent they're they're silently easing apparently and they did put 300 billion back into the the markets and so um you know there's there's that so they've clearly kind of changed their stance i i think we probably really don't know what's going on and what happens we've got to keep an eye on the charts and that's the end that's why we're here and to trust the indicators so uh, let's see. Supreme Court will hear arguments. First ever crypto related case on Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. Coinbase. Uh, uh, well, actually, this is interesting because I am part of a class action lawsuit against Coinbase. And so they're they're just going to drag that on. I won't bore you with that. But, um, uh, they, you know, they grew too fast. 2021, they locked a whole bunch of people out of the platform, including myself. Couldn't get in while the markets tanked. And I sat there and watched 25,000 evaporate. And uh, so, you know, I mean, they should be somewhat hold accountable. But don't worry if you're using Coinbase or own it. Uh, it's not going to hurt the share price. So uh, let's see. But yeah, this is uh, just interesting. Just as an aside, the first lawyers that I hired... Uh, with the class action uh, wimped out because of the, you know, and this is important for you guys to know also, all these exchanges do have an arbitration clause that you sign when you sign up, basically saying you waive all rights to class action lawsuits and uh, we'll go to arbitration. So the first uh, law firm, Mahoney Law, they basically talked a big game and then they sent out letters saying, you know what, uh, we decided not to pursue this because it probably will the judge will order it to arbitration uh never accept things at face value however because um you know i i just uh my spidey sense was later on i just googled it again thinking maybe someone maybe there's another lawsuit and sure enough there is a, a bigger law firm that uh specializes in bigger cases and they said too bad we're going to come out we're going to do it anyway because so so that's really what this is about supreme court uh, uh sorry the coinbase attorneys are trying to have supreme court interesting it's gone to supreme court by the way uh to send it back to arbitration 
and um and then we'll see but um the point of that is uh, you guys should know that if you have money on one exchange and it goes down whether it's coinbase or gemini or whichever one uh, the uh, recourse is very is very small so it's a good reason to have that spread around and um your you know generally your recourse is arbitration you know unless they go insolvent like ftx so but you know i think we've spread enough doom and gloom here things are looking up and you know the there's a new sheriff in town figuratively the wild west is getting cleaned up and don't really know who that sheriff is yet but it feels like it's it feels like it's time for crypto really to um you know, still be a little turbulent, but to move in the right direction. We thought it was going to be 2021, but uh, the there's a new paradigm in in banking, and things are different now. Mike and I were chatting yesterday about all of this and what it could lead to, and of course, there's also the news that we, if you haven't heard, that the former CTO of Coinbase, um, non related to this, uh, has, has a bet, a big bet out there that essentially saying that if Bitcoin doesn't hit a million dollars per Bitcoin in 90 days, then uh, he'll lose a bet. Uh, with a uh, there's a, a Twitter person who bet anybody that we would not see hyperinflation. And uh, so this uh, the CTO of former CTO of Coinbase basically said, I'll take that bet. And if Bitcoin does not hit a million dollars per Bitcoin, which I don't think is that's not going to happen, but it is definitely a vote of confidence. And so probably he's trying to ramp up the rhetoric of money coming back into Bitcoin, likely because he has enough of it that he'll make five million if it even gets to 50,000, 60,000, et cetera, uh, you know, 100,000, whatever. But a million dollar Bitcoin in 90 days, uh, that would be un unbelievable, but of course possible if all of the. You know, we'll touch upon that. And I think this is probably a conversation for Active Trader tomorrow. But, you know, people are not wanting to have their money in banks, clearly not safe. And uh, if the uh, big money and wealthy whales and people that traditionally had their money in the stock market just put 10% of it into Bitcoin because or more, that could certainly have a supply shock and really shoot things higher. So uh, we're going to want to watch carefully. And, uh, and I'll give you my thoughts on what happens next. I think we uh, probably see some kind of a pullback over the next couple of weeks and consolidation. But then I think it really it, it explodes when we see our indicators line up again. Uh, but it may not. It may just shoot up sooner. Uh, I don't think we're going down much farther, though. Let's see. Uh, we won't, won't talk about Arbitrum here. I didn't really want to get into the weeds with all of this. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to get a... Um, feel for this the markets and general news here so let's see crypto versus bitcoin passes the bank stress test you know but that's the thing is people are realizing that their money's not safe in the banks and with uh, credit swiss you know be being bailed out ostensibly by usb ubs rather and um but uh the bondholders are not really happy at ubs they don't want that deal so that that's not a done deal yet i don't you know um and, and there may be more banks that are going to, I could be wrong. It might, might be a done deal. I just, I know the bondholders not happy about it, but there's more mid-range banks that certainly could go under. And, um, you know, but also this, you know, Bitcoin is now being seen as the leader in terms of the recovery. And uh, there was a news article I was reading this morning, early this morning, basically um, trying to call who it was saying, Hey, look, um, I'm going to move all of my my risk assets, all my investments out of the stock market and into Bitcoin because uh, it has a higher potential return and it's going to be safer. And so, you know, we want to be careful. We want to watch for that kind of rhetoric and uh, uh, the because uh, this is scaring people. If you had five hundred million dollars or hundred million dollars, you don't want it in the banks. So, interesting uh, times that we live in. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, like KS says, if Bitcoin goes to 1 million 90 days, we will have other issues to worry about than being rich off Bitcoin. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So, um, you know, there's a reason why people I know very well, I won't know any names, are getting joint citizenship in places like Mexico. And, you, you know, probably will not get to that point, but uh it's been a hell of a couple of years hasn't it 
So uh, then uh, this here, cryptocurrency has severed its ties with stocks, bonds, and tagged on to rally in gold. Yeah, this so this is an interesting move too. So it will be interesting to see because uh, Bitcoin really closely tracked uh, the NASDAQ 100 and tech stocks in the 2021 rally and in 2022. And that's no longer the case. It's, uh, you know, they, it's sort of tagging onto a rally in gold and safer assets. So our original thesis in our presentations, Mike and I in 2021 was $135,000 Bitcoin. Why? Because that would be 10% of the investable assets out there, including the gold, silver, sovereign wealth funds, and, um, you know, just shifting 10% of their money over. And, uh, you know, I think sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, they're going to need to see some regulation, but that could be replaced by big investment funds, hedge funds, things like that, kind of pulling out of the stock market because uh, in banks. So I don't know the exact answer, you guys. I just want you to keep that in mind that um, we want to be ready and uh, not chase this, but, but this could explode at any moment. And um, tomorrow should be interesting i think probably uh, i was watching something that they've there's like an 80 percent chance that they've priced in a 25 basis point uh, don't quote me on the statistics but the markets are pricing in a 25 basis point um uh hike uh yeah, let's look at that actually because um this person was saying that looking at fed funds rate but we're going down a rabbit hole here i think a lot of the um uh, less sophisticated investors are assuming that they won't raise. And so if they raise a quarter point, you could see a bit of a drop, not the end of the world. If they raise a half a point, which I can't see any reason that would happen, then the markets are going to dump. But I really don't see that. And just a quick jump over here that I posted in the uh, Active Trader chat, you know, we're kind of falling down into this crypto rally zone. So you want to keep an eye on the DXY. And uh, let's just, I'll come back to that here in a moment. Uh, XRP hop, popping higher a little bit. Anything else that uh, you guys are seeing in the news that you want to unpack? You can pull up Crypto Panic here. I also like Daily Hodl for news events. And that's what I was reading this morning. And um, let's see, Investor Call, Venture Capital no idea who this is. Everyone's coming out. These headlines, Investor Who Called a 2022 Bottom. Well, Shit, so did I. I predicted it in, in May, but even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. Uh, no idea who this person is, but um, uh, let's see. Ethereum run higher. Let's we'll definitely look at Ethereum and XRP. Who knows? Bitcoin gearing up for peril. These are ad driven. I don't know. Um, keep in mind that some of this daily hodl is pretty good, but uh, the people, I don't know where they're finding these contributors. And uh, let's see, you know, it's good to kind of have an idea who these people are. Here's the uh, former CTO saying a million dollar Bitcoin. Balaji, I uh, won't pronounce his last name, but, um, you know, so, so if you guys want to unpack that a little bit, if you haven't heard it, we can get into a little bit. Let's see, breakout. Now, Solana Prime for new rallies. Also, we want to watch Helium. It's down and around a dollar again, which I said, that dollar number, it's just, you know, you get $1,000, 1,000 Helium coin in the long haul. But um, I just, I want to make sure there isn't more bad news on that, something we didn't see. Let's see, I'll just skim over these. Macro, Raul Paul. Um, eh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of meh on Raul. Uh, but, but um uh, uh, he's uh, he's 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 uh, he's got a lot of money in the markets. Let's see. He predicts Bitcoin reaches fifty thousand. That's what I said. We'll show you why. Uh, Sheep. We're not going to talk about it's contrarian amid market rallies. More outflows. That should be interesting. And so you know, as usual, there's lots of news on both sides. So what do we do? We see what's happening in the charts. Fundamental paradigm shift. But yeah, this is something Mike and I were discussing. That uh, let's touch on that paradigm shift as U.S. banking system falters. I mean, that's what Bitcoin was built for, and Satoshi's original thesis. And you know, I mean, I think none of us. I think well, I won't say none. I think many of us really doubted is that ever could that ever be possible, but we're seeing it unfold before our eyes. And uh, crypto scams, yeah, yeah. 
So that's probably all we want to do there. Let me just scan the crypto huddle. Let's see. I can't credit in Congress. Probably the same page for crypto. All right, this is good. I want to see some regulation uh, in crypto. So let's see what that's about. That will precipitate. Again, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds. That's where the big money is, you guys. And uh, and and here to keep this in mind as well. Europe, Credit Suisse, they don't have FDIC. And the Swiss government, so I, I heard that the Credit Suisse has about $480 billion exposed. And um, the Swiss uh, country only has like $800 billion GDP. So they can't just come and absorb that. We'll, we're like we have the FDIC here. European sovereign wealth funds, that's why the Saudis were like, sorry, we're not helping you out. Uh, we're not exactly friends with the, the Saudi government, but there's a lot of money there that, um, and in that region that at some point could explode this price in Bitcoin. I, I mean, that is really what everyone's banking on, in case you haven't heard that. Uh, Ethereum supply falls by 70,000. So, you know, that's, that, you know, definitely want to keep an eye on Ethereum and the upcoming merge uh, for the uh, Shanghai upgrade. And crypto train coin miss. So I think uh, that's about all I wanted to show. Although this is interesting, uh, crypto trading tech firm wins a patent for smart order router. Patents are good, people. Google buys a lot of companies because they're for their patents. Uh, let's see, a 16Z big venture capital firm, Andreessen Horowitz, uh, that is. $40 million round for blockchain games set in EVE universe. Yeah, the gaming's going to be huge. It's going to be big. And um, a play to, play to earn. I've got a, a SaaS project you guys know, and I'm working with a top UI guy. He's uh, sent me something on play to earn, but not something I'm really uh, familiar with. Uh, let's see. All right, that's enough. Uh, we'll just jump in here. Congress needs to put regulations on the same page for crypto, says the CFTC. So pressure from the CFTC on Congress to get regulators on board with that. That's good. And, um, you know, that will, well, us allegedly good. And we want to see good regulation and hopefully it has to get, it has to get passed and is not uh, too overburdening, but ideally that it's, um, you know, protects us from these companies like FTX, and uh, and that that has to stop. I mean, look, we're all considerably beat up from all of these things, and it's not okay. So the only way that's going to be, you know, left to their own devices, the San Bankman frauds of the world are going to continue doing this. And whether he was a patsy or not, it doesn't matter. They should have had regulation on that. Somebody doing at least auditing all these things, or we're all going to continue to be at risk. You know, I have an old saying, if you make it easy for people to steal, they will. And I'm sorry uh, if, if you guys, I like to have a, you know, a positive outlook with people, but I've owned businesses for 30 years and twice the people I trusted the most stole from me. My CFO robbed me about $175,000. Trusted this guy, let him keys to my house, all of these things. But I, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking in the right place because I was too busy. So, um, you know, prove me wrong. But um, yeah. So at any rate, so let's see how regulators work together. The problem is, though, they hold different views over how to define some digital assets. So again, we're still in the Wild West. But, uh, you know, this ultimately will be a huge catalyst for the market. So just keep that in mind. And I would have some powder dry. Uh, and uh, for the, you know, if your outlook is two to five to t five, 10 years, you know, let's call it a, you know, by 2030. Let's just say we've got a seven year window, but really we we're looking for the 2024, 2025 next bull run. and. Um, that's where the big returns are going to cut are going to come. So this should come before then. And you want to be positioned well, or at least ready to jump on that. Let's see DC blockchain summit. I should know about that since I live in DC. Forgive me here. I'm going to Google that bugger and I'll look at it later. So um, yeah, uh, call for legislation. Got the idea. All right, I think uh, we don't have that much time for the news. We want to get to the charts here. Let's see some comments as well. 
Uh, let me skim this up. I got to make my chat window bigger. Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki has been putting out some dire predictions in the last week or so. Yeah, he he has been for a while. I mean, he's Kiyosaki's smart. I mean, he's not at least he's not Harry Dent. I've known Harry Dent for 20 years and he's predicted seven of the last 22 recessions. You know, he's he's a he's a, a perma bear. But um, so but yeah, Kiyosaki's a smart guy. But look, it, you, you have to. They're all they're all out there. With, clickbait is is similar in youtube they're all trying to get attention attention's the new currency but um i wouldn't dismiss it and uh, let's see relates to fed banking crisis fed government end game probably more than as usual mostly promoting investing in physical gold yeah he's a big gold bug uh in silver outside of the financial system bitcoin has been suspiciously absent even a casual mention in those talks though he is still investing in gold and bitcoin yeah he's still buying bitcoin uh you know i mean look it's He's he's doing a great job remaining relevant, and there's likely a monetization end game for Kiyosaki as well. So for him to turn around and say, "See, I was right," uh, buy my newsletter. I mean, he's he's uh, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, we um, before I was doing this, we were speaking in uh, the UK four or five times a year for a company that licensed uh, Rich Dad Poor Dads from Kiyosaki and. Uh, he licensed it to them. They sold a ton of his seminars. He wasn't there. They just paid him 10%. He is very much a capitalist. Uh, in fact, I have his book over on my stack of books, which when I have some air quotes free time, I'm going to read something called the, I'm looking over there, uh, something about being a capitalist. But that that is Kiyosaki's end game. So, you know, you have to kind of look to where where people's intentions are, but uh, I would, I'm not discounting it. I think he's, he's a smart guy. Pension funds have large allocations to us government debt bonds and the inverted yield curve has been wrecking the value of those bonds. That uses a long post here again here. So pension fund is there's not marking those. Um, Yeah. Okay, so you can read Capitalist Manifesto. Yeah, Pirate J, thank you. Uh, read KS's comments, uh, certainly valid. I want to kind of, I'm trying to stick to the timeline and do 30 minutes of news and 30 minutes of uh, charts. So, but uh, some some good comments from KS there in the chat. All right, well, what else do we want to look at? Here we have investor who called the 2022 crypto bottom. So what do I need to do to get in the daily hodl and say an investor who called the 2021 November top? Because I was telling you guys to get out back then. But anyway, so what, right? Um, Sending for Bitcoin, Chris Berniski, no idea who that is. Critical technical indicator, ARK Invest analyst. I don't know. It's uh, SMA. Like we'll, we'll do our own here. I got, we we'll got that. We got that. Top crypto analyst says Bitcoin could be gearing up for a parabolic push. Another top crypto analyst. Gee, they're everywhere. Kevin Svensson. Just call him Sven. Uh, his 124,000 Twitter followers. Yeah, I need to get my Twitter game going. Um, but I don't know. Not a big Twitter or, or not a big tweeter. According to Svensson, Bitcoin following parabolic curve. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Two bases of support. Um, I don't know, you guys. I don't want to confuse you with more TA. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. I conf I'm confident what I'm I'm doing, and I'm, I'll show you. So, uh, doubles down, massive. Yeah. So this is that thing by the um, former CTO of of Coinbase, Balaji. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, he believes that the U.S. dollar could uh, have a fiat currency collapse. Jeez, I hope not. And uh, he's so, but I think this is also an attention getting bet to help stimulate the Bitcoin price. And, and my, I, I'll bet you that comes out later. He'll just say, look, I knew we wouldn't go to a million, but I have a, uh, let's see, I just got my alerts. XRP just crossed 0.44 cents. Um, hold that thought, you guys. Let's see what's happening. Is there something happening with XRP, uh, Bitcoin's pushing higher, bit up 400 points. So uh, let's see, where is XRP? If it's in a massive breakout, I want to just see what's going on there. Because at some point, that lawsuit's going to come to an end. And back to having, yeah, look at that. Something just popped, you guys. Uh, we have an XRP article out. Let's see. We'll come back to that thought. I want to just see... 
or did we decide not to look at it? Uh, okay, so here we go. XRP whales. So XRP is in play, you guys. If you're an XRP, uh, you know, um, follower and uh, like it. I'm not really, well, I like anything going up. Okay, XRP is in play, you guys. I mean, it's a nice lottery ticket. That thing hit my, it just hit our alert. And what I would do though, is I would wait till the end of the day and see where it closes. And uh, if, you know, have an alert at 45 cents, if this thing, you know, what happens is the margin traders start piling on this and they'll pump it and then it might pull back. Well, I would not chase this right here. Where are my ERIs guys? uh this is i'm on the wrong chart i need my daily chart here and so let's come back to xrp kind of got derailed there well we will go back to that we got all green on the radar here you guys so so the markets are looking pretty good here for some breakout that's xrp again we've got a bearish eri though uh but that doesn't necessarily mean anything i've got my golden pocket this thing could pump up the 46 cents region uh, this is one I wouldn't uh, necessarily chase, but look at that. All green on the radar. What I was suggesting is it's got to uh, hold above 40, uh, this level here, the resistance level. So if it sells off end of the day, here's how to play XRP. Wait for a pullback, a sell off. And I'd be looking to buy in this region here for follow up pump. I think this follows through. Especially, uh, that's the weekly chart. We've got a bit of a rocket there on the weekly. Um, not textbook, right? Because, but wait a minute, wait for it. What do we see? I mean, the rocket now has been showing signs of when it's on any kind of support. So looky there. So we have a rocket on trend line support, kind of on the 21 day and uh, on a weekly basis. So what I would suggest is any pullback on XRP would be, I'd say, a decent uh, buy because see the downtrending channel has now been broken. That's another reason it's breaking out. So, um, you know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. There you go. See, right away, I'm like, there's news on XRP right there. So um, there's the news, you guys. But if you have your alerts set, you don't have to be skimming the news all the time. And uh, just to finish that thought here, you know, this will pump up here, I think around 46 cents. That's the Fibonacci golden pocket. Uh, we've covered that a number of times and um, you guys should know that by now, but I'll draw it one more time here. So we grab our Fibonacci from the old high right there and to the low right here. And then I'll just extend it out. So there we have it. 46 cents is my uh, target on that. Uh, before a pullback, I mean, usually it'll hit and touch that 46 cents to 47 cents. And, but I think the really, um, well, legging into positions is the name of the game. So if they win, you know, normally I would want to see a pullback here, see some profit taking, then exit or enter the trade, this regardless of what it is. But uh, if, if they win the case, uh, I mean, now we're looking at much higher prices, 75, we've got 72 cents, we've got our Fibonacci there, I think a dollar, certainly in the cards. So you guys, XRP, I mean, it would be not a bad idea to have, start legging into a position for 100% gain, 120% gain potentially. All right, so we have our alert set, we can come back to that, and uh, but that's the news with the XRP there. Let's see, I'll keep going. I, we can also do this. Inside of Crypto Panic, you can put in a symbol and see what the um, uh, but so what the news is. This doesn't seem that current. Signal emerges, can Ethereum buy XRP? Yeah, we've got this article open. A pro XRP lawyer predicts critical documents related to former SEC will available to the public. All right, we'll see. Um, all right, uh, back to the Coinbase bet. Again, I was saying that uh, the uh, Baraji, Balaji was saying that he took a bet from a Twitter person who bet a million dollars that Bitcoin would not hit, or sorry, that we wouldn't hit hyperinflation. 
And so the Balaji said he would take that bet and that Bitcoin will skyrocket to a million dollars in just 90 days. Um, yeah, I mean, as KS said, if that were to happen, we are effed in the global banking system. I mean, we've got serious problems if that happens. So, but I, I'm leaning toward that uh, he's placing this bet because he has a shit ton of Bitcoin anyway, pardon my French, and uh, the by helping to pump the price to 50,000 sooner than later and maybe more, he'll make several million dollars. So that wouldn't, that would be a fair play. I mean, he's uh, being a good crypto enthusiast. I don't know, purely speculating. Uh, and now he's saying he's doubling down on his bullish Bitcoin price. He tells his 800, wow, 847,000 Twitter followers. I mean, you know what guys, attention is the new currency. He could easily monetize these followers into more than a million dollars. And now he is on the radar, my friends. So I'm always sort of a little skeptical of these in the intentions, but um, but still not to dismiss it, dismiss it. U.S. dollar could soon mirror the state of Weimar Marx following the defeat of Germany. Yeah, we want to keep an eye on that. And um, I don't know, maybe time to start buying some gold. Uh, let's uh, let's just discuss it briefly. That's what happens when people exit a failing fiat currency and enter into gold. Yeah, I mean, Kiyosaki's been saying gold for a long time. So he may be right. In this case, they'll exit the dollar and enter the digital uh, digital gold, which would be Bitcoin. The bet isn't a way to make money. It's a way to alert innocent dollar hodlers, holders to get to Bitcoin. Yeah. That's an interesting. I mean, definitely want to... Put it on the radar, maybe do a Google alert for uh, for any breaking news on this. But then again, what do you do? I, um, I'm not here to give financial advice, but um, I don't want to rush uh, rush past this. This is you know significant. We want to see how this unfolds. But um, anyway, uh, he's in, uh, blaming the Federal Reserve for the current banking crisis that led to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, I was reading something this morning. Like, there's, there's, this is going to be a lot of fallout from that. A lot of startups uh, may go under, and um, you know, they're saying they're going to make them whole, but I don't know how that's going to be possible. All the depositors, and um, you know, Signature Bank and Silvergate, they're not getting bailed out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I don't think they're they're getting covered. Uh, they don't represent systemic risk. And Yellen, there was a, a clip with Yellen on where they were hard questioning her about all this. And she basically said that, yeah, you know, um, uh, they these things uh, won't be covered. So uh, the signs are out there that it could be a bumpy ride. Let's see. People try to pin SVB on tech scapegoats. And so on. Everybody. Yeah, and the problem, there's a big problem with all of this in that back in the 2008 crisis, they were selling long-term bonds. And uh, the problem with that is, is as interest rates go up, the long-term maturity on those uh, bonds, uh, treasuries rather, the um, makes them worthless. So that also, that greatly contributed. So, you know, the Fed raising interest rates so much really contributed to that. And yeah, you know, here exactly. Sell bonds to everybody, promptly devalue them, cover up subsequent insolvency, desire responsibility. Thank you, Fed. And so now what they're doing, you know, interest rates are high. So these people are buying short-term treasuries. Well, what happens next? Now that's a bit above my pay grade, so we're not going to get into that. But this was one for the maybe one for the books. Devaluation of the dollar, rise of Bitcoin, the global flipping to the east you know there's a really good i would encourage you to watch ray dalio's uh, netflix show on um i forget the name escapes me but it's based on his book principles and uh he's talking about it's already happening the 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 dollar the fall of the dollar as a u.s reserve currency is uh, is underway and at this point probably heading deeper toward that and who's you know the jap uh, the chinese uh, yuan is on the rise now the big question is can bitcoin step in there or in you know, china and russia have been uh, 
combining buying a lot of gold kind of create a gold backed reserve currency so you guys probably know a lot of this i'm just trying to paint the picture of of how i'm absorbing it all personally and and what we're seeing happening so uh this is um you know it doesn't get us closer to what we do we're going to watch the charts and see kind of you know that tends to see the charts don't lead but it does give us an eye into the group psychology of who the bigger bet holders are where they're placing their bets rather uh so let's see uh 20th century rewarding existence so um yeah i don't know guys well if you guys have any what do you guys think and uh pirate jay i've been seeing things that look like the three white soldiers um i don't not from i don't follow that one pirate jay the three white soldiers which um maybe you could explain that so we'll get to the charts in a minute let's see more experts analysts on the daily hodl breakout for ethereum solana prime for new rallies you know solana i think again solana will run again it's uh it's got heavy investment by one of the top vcs in the world andreessen harowitz uh, it's eight to sixteen a to z 16 something like that and uh let's see this guy says ethereum can shoot past the 1900 dollars range basically on a bounce off of a moving average a b c x y z etc etc fine okay uh we'll see what we see on our own charts contrarian positions amid institutional investors taking contrarian positions amid crypto rally as markets see more outflows so this is interesting you want to get all sides of this uh sixth consecutive week of outflows yeah but that's the public not wanting to trust you know funds and etfs and 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 just because i i think they might want to take control of their own investments digital asset flows weekly coin shares finds institutional crypto investment products suffered outflows 95 million last week well fine but they might have just put it right into bitcoin this is kind of meaningless or buying gold um contrarian positions taken by institutions how does that mean contrarian positions taken by institutions this i i don't know maybe i misread that this uh, the uh institutional crypto investments suffered outflows oh i see so institutions leaving coin shares yeah i don't know uh we don't have time to unpack all that the good thing is we can see it in the charts. Uh, so Bitcoin undergoing a fundamental paradigm shift. I'll touch on this here. Um, and uh, this is something Mike and I were talking about. There's kind of a an inherent change. We are in the midst of a paradigm shift of banking. What does it mean? And is it is is can it work? You know, the fractional reserves in banking, especially when many of the banks uh, went to zero percent fractional reserves during COVID. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this, it's going to be really interesting to see. Hopefully you, you guys are sitting on some Bitcoin just in case I currently am not, but I'm, I'm looking at doing that and uh, probably Ethereum because the ROI will be uh, bigger on a percentage basis, but, uh, with the intention of turning profits into long-term Bitcoin holdings. But let's see, increasing number of investors likely to start buying Bitcoin as valuable alternative asset outside of the traditional monetary system. Certainly possible. And I would encourage you to, to not wait on this. I think there's a tendency to sit around and look at, well, why isn't it going higher? Maybe I should wait. And then it shoots up a thousand, two thousand points. And then it's head in the sand. Well, I'll wait for a pullback that never comes. So the answer to all of these questions is start building positions with stop losses. But it, once we get to our chart with the accumulation zones, you know, I had accumulation zones one, two, and three. Well, we may not nice see number three. And, you know, that was a, we thought I would, but I said, uh, I've been telling you guys, um, I don't sound mean to sound preachy, but um, this is a good lesson that markets do typically what the least amount of people expect. So had you been accumulating in that accumulation zone, um, where's that chart here? That would have been the way to play this and in retrospect and hindsight and all of those good things. But uh, it's a, it, it's the reason I'm kind of harping on this. It's a good lesson for all of us, myself included, that 
you know, um, the, the, the narrative of all the news, etc. If you know, we want to, um, discount that a little bit, cause we can kind of see what, what happens here. We got back above the bull market support band, increasing volume, you know, and, uh, look where we are now. So that, uh, we're, we're you know, that accumulation zone one was the place. And the you know this I had suggested that the FTX drop, had it not happened, right? We had this nice upward trending support level. Had FTX not happened, this was kind of that big capitulation. So, you know, right back up to this trend line support, this accumulation zone one. The smart investors were accumulating in here, and right down in this level. But look. I'm I'm right there with you. I thought uh, the other shoe would still drop here and we'd head down maybe down to this 14,500. For some reason, I really thought we'd get to 14,5. But that's why we always want to be aware of our own confirmation bias. So at this point, uh, more likely we go up to the $30,000 level, may get some kind of a pullback here. That would be an ideal place to kind of come back in and buy Bitcoin with a stop loss, right? Anything could still happen. But the next push higher, as we'll show you, I think is 48K, 52K. So uh, the TLDR on that. So let's see, where are we? Um, a daily news here, the average uh, US bank failures, reliquification. We're kind of running out of time on that. So there's more. You guys could go and look online and uh, and read more on that. So that's all I have time for on the news here. DC Blockchain Summit, I'll look into that. And uh, let's see, probably let's see on progress on the XRP. I just want to see what do they mean by progress? Uh, trading volume. Ripple steadily moves towards victory, uh, but how, how defined by what? Now, this, however, wouldn't it be interesting timing that now we're back into kind of the bull market if the SEC loses? And XRP, uh, XRP uh, claims victory, right? And um, and they're not a security. The whole market's going to take off. That could certainly be a catalyst to push us to 50K. So, um, yeah, okay, I misread that. The one-two punch to regulators who have been left embarrassed by the weak complaint. So Garlinghouse believes legal fight will come to an end sooner or later, likely in H1 2023. H1, what is H1? Q1 is almost over. Um, I don't know what H1 is. What does that mean? Anybody know? Uh, you mean, you know, to take it with a grain of salt, you know, BitBoy, who's, you know, I think he does, does a good job on things overall, good research team, but he was, he had inside information, air quotes, you know, or a source that it would, uh, they would win and be announced um, a year ago. So that's not over till the fat lady sings, it's not over till it's over. But uh, this is encouraging, though, that it's sort of leaning that way and smart money may be buying into it. Technical signals, typically moving averages, trending bullish. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. Okay, major XRP transfers. This is what I was looking for. Whales. So, what do the on-chain metrics say? Bracing for some action. Uh, can't get rid of this little. What's going on there? It won't let me uh, get rid of that. Twitter account. Ali shared fifty whales. Okay, that's fifty whales up to hundred million XRP. Join the Ripple army. So that's that big pump right there. Um, I mean, allegedly, I don't can't confirm this, but uh, let's say that that's true. According to Twitter account, whale alerts, more than 53 million in XRP was recently transferred from one unknown wallet to another. Well, that happens all day long. Um, I'll take that with a grain of salt, but we'll watch it. Yeah, don't don't trust anything at face value with all of these, you know. So, all right, enough, uh, enough of the news here. Let's see, covered that and um. Okay, let's dive in. 
Overall, we've got a little bit of a pop here on the Dow. Dow's still in his bearish pattern, and I have been watching some technical analysts, analysts saying that, hey, there's a big crash coming still. It's so hard to know, you guys. Uh, in this, but here's the thing: stock markets could still crash and move over into Bitcoin. That kind of is the flippening we've been waiting for, and uh, we'll look and see. So we want to not be married to our narratives. And uh, the DXY and Bitcoin may decouple here too. I'm just this this whole thing may be trash here at some point. If the paradigm is shifting, we have to be really ready to abandon this. But at this particular time, DXY is coming down. We're in crypto rally zone, and um, I'm going to put an alert here on the DXY. If this thing gets below 102, then potentially we are back into this. Um, well, we're still in crypto rally zone. Here's what. Let's do this. We'll call it crypto rally zone one and crypto rally zone two. And then we'll still hold out for, of course, the crypto super pump rally zone, which is just fun to say. And I hope we get there. And uh, then I can go on daily hodl maybe as top crypto analysts who predicted the crypto super pump rally. Just, just kidding. I uh, just... Uh, yeah. Interesting how this has been playing out, though. All right. First half of the year. Um, yeah, that makes sense, Rick. I've just never seen H1. That makes sense. So they're predicting SEC victory in the next 90 days. Well, hey, I mean, I, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's certainly possible. I mean, I've been suggesting that we do see, you know, certainly by July, we see uh, this thing bottomed and rallying higher. And I'm remembering that uh, well-known Twitter um, and, and, and sort of Bitcoin proponent, Bob Lucas, uh, it's L-O-U-K-A-S. He was suggesting, he had an interesting argument that um, we see a, an early push on Bitcoin, whereas normally we see the pump, the pump on the second half of the uh, bell curve going into the halving. Uh, let's see, for lack of a better ability to draw this. So the bell curve we normally see as, why is it not letting me do that? Is this kind of a, what going into the halving, you know, and the halving is sort of uh, in this region. I'm waiting, I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong on this. Uh, forgive me, let me look at the dates. I didn't draw it long enough. The point of this is, Whereas we usually kind of push up here right into the having, I'm going to redraw that. You know, uh, his his thesis is that we see it sooner than later. So, and I'm probably not drawing this right. Okay, but in the bell curve, that um, where the having is sort of in this region, and we see the run up going into the having. Uh, he's suggesting that um, we see it sooner so that uh, maybe it's more like this. It's skewed prior to the having. This is what he's so it's so in that regard, uh, the that could we could see a massive pump right here. And then so we've got to be ready for everything and anything, you guys. Um, uh, but everything kind of leads to the same conclusion here which i'm proud to say is that our indicators have performed beautifully i was a little bit uneasy saying i don't know about this guys and we have an eri on the monthly and the tsi is confirming which we had here and here and here and now here and look at that That's exactly what happened so i think as we go along you know, and again, this ERI we sort of stumbled into and accidentally found. It's pretty simple. But, uh, and by the way, um, uh, I'm not sure if Brandon's here. We are working with one of our students to uh, program this into an algo, our indicators. And uh, we had a call yesterday with a platform that does a lot of algo trading building, one of the former creators of Voyager. And, um, and I sent the code for the ERI over to uh, uh to uh you know brandon and we're, we're going to program this thing so how cool would that be if we get this thing to automate itself you know but i think it's important to have confidence in the indicators and so uh let's take a look at why i'm saying 48 to 52k 
Again, we have the Fibonacci golden pocket here from the market tops back here to the market lows. Let me turn off the ERI so you can see that. Yeah, I'll turn the radar on, by the way, which is all green. Beautiful. Love to see that. You know, uh, to be honest, when we first built the radar, and I mean we, I mean Joe, uh, the uh, but well, actually, it was my idea. So, no, but I, I was a little iffy. How does this useful? But it's useful when it's all one color. And I even have a, a longer term version of this. So, um, what do we see here? We've got the uh, ERI was our first signal, and then we have we are having the confirmation. So, because this is the crypto mastery class, this is significant right here it doesn't look like much this little tiny green dot but it's above the 20 line that is our confirmation now the month hasn't ended yet but this looks good so in the next nine days we'll know for sure but when we close the month above 20 and really ideally we want to get above this line because it was resistance back in here so i want to have an alert here right at 25 but we're going to know pretty soon whether to be bullish and go in on this. And uh, and so, but getting in, starting to add to a position here in Bitcoin, I think is probably prudent. Uh, not going all in, but we're getting closer to it. Keep stop losses. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I, this this is looking bullish and we're above 20. If we can get above 25, I think we're home free for at least another push up to that 50k again so uh, and then we also have the signal line about to go green uh, maybe another week or so week and a half well, let's see if we probably well, that's actually april but if this let's see i'd say april april 1st is coming april's right around the corner you guys okay so keep an eye on that and when those things happen, we can pull up the trend uh, indicators. So with this, based on these things, I think our we can revise this a bit on our likely uh, bounces. You know, could this still reverse and head lower down in these ranges? Anything's possible, uh, but I think more than likely we push up higher into this uh, next. You know, what this month though? I think this month I think we hit thirty to 32k that was the support uh, flip to resistance back in this region and then i think we do see some kind of a pullback but uh because of the strength in this market here i think that oops uh, and i'm just this is dubious speculation as ben cowan says so you know let's kind of keep that in mind and uh not spend too much time on it but um to further that thought and just for the to, the big takeaway for today is Things are very bullish. Uh, I think we push up higher. We have some kind of pullback here. And then this scenario here is our ideal buy zone. So enough pontificating on my part. Want me to get to the point? That's the point. Right in this zone, you guys. If we see Bitcoin pull back here, it may not get that all the way, all the way back in here. Into this, yeah, I don't think it goes... Back to that level, we already touched the midpoint of this big vector candle here, so we don't need to do that. I, I think that, um, you know, certainly if it does come back to 19,328, but I don't think it does, you know, uh, any pullback in this region. Actually, I drew that in the wrong place. 25,300 was that level. Yeah, I drew that completely wrong, you guys. Got too many arrows on this. Um, we're looking at, let me make this arrow a different color. Uh, I don't want to lose anybody. So I'm going to make this a, a green arrow. This is our bullish scenario, and let's make it bigger so it stands out. Beautiful. That's what we're looking for. Pull back into this 25,300, anywhere up to 28,000, which is where we are now. I get it. But I'd feel better about this on a pullback on the daily because then we'll, that'll give us the strength to push higher. And I think it goes quickly to 48,000 to 52,000, which here I have as a resistance area because it's the Fibonacci golden pocket. There, I got it out. That's the that's the point of all this. And that's your takeaway here. I'm going to put, put a picture of that. Nice, pretty picture we can put on our wall. And... Uh, you guys can let me know if I was right or not.
Uh, again, why that level Fibonacci golden pocket from the market high down to, down to this lower level here. And that puts us right squarely at 48,000, which would be the 0.618 retracement. Make sure I drew this exact here. Actually, now it's exact. The bottom of this was right in there to the bottom of the tail. Uh, trend lines, typically you'll draw on the real body Fibonacci's. You draw on the, the actual top bottom. So trend lines. Isn't that interesting? We didn't see that before, but that intersects the midpoint of that vector candle along with this, uh, this one here. Anyway, we're just drawing lines in the sand here. But um, anyway, the average true rage is still bearish. Uh, I'd be interested to see. Well, I think we're spending too much time on this. You guys I got that. I'll put the screenshot of that in the signal chart for you, anyone an active trader. If you are not an active trader and you want to find out more about that, uh, we the M3 program uh, will be doing a uh, webinar next Thursday, by the way, and kind of reopening that. But you can find out more at moonstream.io slash M3. All right, let's take a look a little bit more. What else can we see here on the other monthly chart? Uh, so with this, um, now, by the way, you remember I drew this red arrow back in January? Let's see, I drew it somewhere back in here, and I forget why I drew it, but damn, that thing didn't play out. And it, I believe it was a pattern recognition from a, a big bullish engulfing candle like this one uh, in relation to this one that saw strong follow through in the past. So. I don't know, uh, you know, at any rate, doesn't, doesn't make, doesn't matter. The one thing I wanted to pull up here is actually a couple things. We have the RSI turning higher. Let's look at that. So great. We did come down to that 40 level, which, uh, you know, we predicted that that we saw 44 and I said, you know what guys, I don't think it's going to hold here. And sure enough, it came back down to 40 back above 44 level. That's bullish there. The stochastics RSI also showing more follow through on the monthly basis. And the big uh, one we're watching here, that monthly MACD. So this puts us probably, you know, I had drawn it out and stretched it out to June. But, um, you know, at this rate, we are looking at a cross here in uh, April, May. And uh, that will be uh, very bullish for Bitcoin. So, you know, we're, we have our outlook is bullish. Uh, we're looking out for a small pullback and another way to excuse to enter. But the big thing here on the weekly, by the way, is it's back above this 200-week moving average, which we closed last week. So. Again, this this is going to hit 30k. Probably pull back down and give us that other entry point. Um, I'd love to see it come back down in this region here, but probably that 25,300 level. That was our line in the sand. That should hold and retest because why big vector candle again? These tend to retest. So I think you know it's certainly possible to come back down in this region, 200 day moving, 200 week moving average rather, and uh, and that would be our ideal buy zone. So keep that in mind and set some alerts for that. Let's see, where do I want to set my alert? I'm going to put it right there on a visual basis. And uh, 25,700-ish. Uh, it's in more of an approximation, so I want to know, does it come back down in that region? And that would be the uh, buy zone. So sometimes these things happen quickly, though, and you forget why you drew these. So that's why I do recommend putting these on here. Pullback. Uh, okay, BTC to GP target. That's the golden pocket, which would be that 48K to 52K. Does everyone understand why it's uh, a range? The, um, uh, hang on a second. Uh, a range because it's, the golden pocket is that 0 0.618 to 0 0.65. Why does it work? Nobody knows. Um, Fibonacci sequence is in all things. So there you go. All right. Uh, let's see. I think we're spending a little too much time on all this. So uh, certainly push higher here. Uh, this this would fit the narrative double test of this upper region here. So in this going into this week, if we hit 30,000 stochastics uh, RSI gets up in here, then we see a pullback, probably come back down in this region. And there again, we would see a great buying opportunity, uh, you know, potentially that um, we'd want to uh, capitalize on. Where's my box tool? There it is. So this again is kind of another approximation of where we'd be looking to buy. 
for the next big pump. That'll be the next one. So I guess I will just say this. Don't be sitting on your hands. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give financial advice, but don't be sitting on your hands waiting for this. If this thing's going to move fast when the catalysts happen, if XRP news comes out, if anything else comes out and, um, you know, uh, FOMC, if there isn't a rate hike, it's going to rocket higher. Uh, but I think we do see some kind of pullback. The, some of this may be anticipation of the FOMC not raising. Really hard to say, but we trust our resistance levels. Uh, not to say it can't blast through there, though. You know, this is why if you haven't been accumulating Bitcoin down here, now would be a good time to start dabbling. And because if it does rocket higher and continue through, you're not going to miss out on it. So see the death cross i want to leave that smma on there uh as far as the ichimoku i don't know if it's there yet on a weekly basis the uh, the cloud is above here and gives us some overhead resistance let's look at it on the daily let me just check the uh comments here when setting up alerts alex sent me a direct message when you choose the greater than option uh i'm not sure what i did there alex let me see before we get to that, I just wanted to check on any divergences here, and we don't see any, so let me open that up. As far as this alert, if I hit edit, crossing up. So I use crossing up. Uh, when you said greater than, I don't know. I don't use greater than, so uh, let's see. Your question is, choose the greater than option. Does that mean that it closes with the body greater than the value? Um, yeah, I would assume so. Um, but I don't know. I don't use that. It's, it's a little bit redundant. Does, does anybody use it? So value greater than, uh, how is that different than crossing up? Probably on a closing basis. So, you know, trading view is, is very, um, in depth and I haven't, you know, that can someone, uh, Google that and just find out. I don't know. I just always use crossing up and, you know, sometimes I'll do entering channel, exiting channel, moving up, moving down, greater than, probably you're right, but the answer is I don't know. So I would imagine you're you're right, and that's something uh, on some of these we definitely want to know. So uh, at any rate, moving along here, let's uh, look at a couple more things in the broader market. Let's get to that as soon as we can. This is the weekly here. We've already unpacked that. Uh, although we do have our trend indicator, which has been very, um, it's been very, been pretty good. So what this shows here, and again, we want to be like Wayne Gretzky. Where's the puck going to be? We're getting overbought here on the TSI weekly. And uh, so the XRP is pumping, guys. What's going on here? Look at that thing shooting up. Let's see what's, yeah, this. Something's up, but this is where you also want to put on your Bollinger Bands. This is day traders, KuCoin margin traders piling on this sucker, and I would not be buying this here. Uh, it's on the radar, but a, a nice pullback in profit taking, uh, we'd be really uh, interested. Now, the day traders, they're going to push it to the golden pocket here. This can pump up here 46 cents. Uh, 47 cents today, but um, then it'll likely pull back within that Bollinger Band. So, guys, we we do we are good at this. We don't need all that fancy stuff that you see all these uh, on the daily hodl wave theory and you know crypto analyst experts. There are a dime a dozen, including me. Hey, look, there are a dime a dozen. I know that, but I like the simple things. And I trust what I see. Look how extended we are on that that Bollinger Band. Uh, short of a victory pending on XRP, I think this is a pump. They'll sell it off, but I think there's something here. And, you know, the ideal scenario, let me just take our time with this. Look back over here uh, when we had this big pump up here. It did have a, a follow through on the daily but and it pumped up above, but then it sold off again. 
and then we kind of came down we had a couple of um sort of rockets on the 21 day pumped again try it again but uh you know i don't like to take on too much risk i never like to chase these big candles uh the caveat being xrp wins a lawsuit but um my read on this it's not worth the risk this is this is going to sell off the retail public it's hitting right now it's, so here's how amateur traders trade they go in the coinbase and i had a buddy who, who was doing this and uh, he burned through all of his inheritance uh, by chasing the hot movers list, which we can look at. But the hot movers list uh, in KuCoin, I'm sorry, in Coin <laughs> Trading View, and uh, with those day traders that are pumping it, they're selling it to the retail traders and you and me. So maybe this hit CNBC, maybe it hit the wires. Um, you know, let's, I'm going to put an alert here at 46 cents, but don't be my, my recommendation. Don't chase this, uh, get it on a pullback. Uh, here, it's not letting me do this 46 cents. I'll just edit it there. Unless some new news just broke here. You guys can tell me, uh, see, there's a uh, chaos for comparison. Look at the last daily XRP candle and see what happened after it topped out. The last daily XRP candle. So do you mean this red candle here, KS? Uh, after it topped out, it pulled back. Yeah, pulled back onto the support line. Uh, no, the last large one. Are, are you kind of alluding to a something else like a rocket somewhere ks i maybe missed something but but anyway on that note look at this uh, K, K, xrp a uh, bit of a rocket here not really though but anytime it finds support on the rising 21 day ema i like it and sure enough a shot up here now what i consider a short on on uh, xrp pull, you, you know i i would if we hit 46 cents Rick, but you know, you know, be careful with that and shorting when there's potential news. You can get burned real fast, and you don't want to get in a short squeeze. Uh, okay, so yeah, so uh, KS meant sort of similar magnitude. Yeah, so basically, he, I guess you mean this candle back here. You know, it could pump higher, and, and maybe what we do is we sell off here a little bit today, and then it pops tomorrow. Let me get rid of this trend channel, or at least hide it. And uh, we may want to refer back to it later. But, uh, and then I'll just turn off the fib here, target here for a moment. So it's not so messy. And the, but yeah, so let's say we sort of close here. Maybe it sells off. I think it probably sells off here to 44 cents. And then it pumps tomorrow or maybe even tonight after hours. And it gets overextended. Let me turn off that Bollinger. Well, see right in here and it pumps up way above the bollinger band guys these never stay up here so that would be a great shorting when it gets this far above the bowling upper bollinger band you know shorting is a day trade short but this thing pulled back nicely back to the 21 day ema and then this was a, this would have been a great trade right in here but uh many of you ask so where do i take profits and then here too you know you have this was a, this was a decent little rocket though that didn't see much follow through it wasn't really a rock oh yeah kind of was didn't have much of a tail but you know uh, again that upper bollinger band the modified the 3bb that we draw and uh you know i just a lot of this is pattern recognition and uh you know remember if you guys have been with me for a while i used to just use a regular bollinger band and i was trying to calculate you know 15 percent above the regular bollinger band and then i just try well what if i make this three standard deviations and it contains it beautifully so so this this doesn't hold it looks like they're going to pump it to 46 here today uh and um but you know that's the caveat, Rick. And they're, they're if if news hits, they win or someone somebody leaks this. Look at that thing pushing higher. I wouldn't chase it. But uh, you know when these things go, they go pretty fast. Rumors and speculation, day traders and margin, risky game. Uh, and so 
anyway, we're running out of time here on this class, you guys, and uh, I've got some work to do. We've got a, a big week next week. We're going to be um, our, doing another promo here for kind of the, the markets as they are and uh, M3, but um, look at Solana's up a bit. Let's look at some more of these. I do want to touch on this here. We've got, now we're down to the daily. Uh, the the CME gap has filled, you guys, and for the majority of it. So let's uh, see if I can open this up wider. So you guys can see that a little more clearly. And the so we isn't that amazing though? The CME gaps, you've been hearing me talk about it, came right down exactly, touched on it. This was back here on Friday, March 10th. Uh, and that was a beautiful day. We were I was shorting this all the way down here. And then on Friday, shorted it right down to the CME gap, but uh gave back a lot of it with some. A lot of market manipulation down these regions. So um, anyway, but uh, bounce right off of this out of the CME gap. So now we've come right up to the CME gap here, 27,320 to 28,845. And look at that. It just came right up to the 28,400, 28. Uh, eight did it get it got up to 28,500. So maybe it even touches a little bit higher, but that's the CME gap. And, uh, you know, then I think it seems some kind of a pullback. Then it can do whatever it wants. But then we kind of have this push up into 30K, 32K for some kind of a pullback. And then I do think we see a, a nice push higher here. So anyway, that uh, has played out here. And DeSantis, what are you doing? Wants to outlaw CBDCs in Florida. Yeah, I should have kept my house down there. Um, Gee, Bullish Bitcoin technical signal suggests the bottom is in. Gee, you think? Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Any other comments? Let's see. Um, okay, Jay. Yeah, I mean, not going to really get into that necessarily. ETH. Sure, let's look at ETH. And uh, we've got Solana here. Solana's looking interesting, you guys. Big cup in the handle pattern forming. So what I would do is have uh, your alerts kind of set here, break out above the handle. So this is, you know, once you start to see these patterns, you can't unsee them. And then you can go about your business. We don't need to spend much more time on this. If Solana gets up above $26. I already had an alert at $28.50. So those are the safer entries. What does it show on our indicators? A bit toppy here, you know, I would sort of, I would keep an eye on that, certainly. Let's take a look at uh, ETH as we talked about. And yeah, ETH looking good. So see how this thing has pushed higher here. It did, it did sort of do both what I thought it could do. These fake outs are pretty common. And then, um, you know, now we're breaking up over above support. So you know, this is that once, twice, three times, four times, five, six, seven times a charm. Ethereum finally broke above that $1,700 level. So this is bullish, guys, and bullish engulfing candle. East about to take off. Today is showing as a take profit day on our trend indicator. So I would... Um, there we go, XRP, 46 cents. Uh, definitely don't chase this, you guys. I mean, I'm sorry if you miss out, but that thing, let's get our golden pocket back on. It just hit, touched. These are the day traders, mark my words, uh, and there's a bunch of them out there. They're in the chat room saying Fibonacci golden pocket, 46 cents. That thing will pull back down. It could pop higher here into this region, but uh, this is not one that I would I would chase personally. Uh, risk reward isn't there. The move has happened. Uh, had you been watching it, just, just to unpack this a bit, though, and you're an XRP person, bullish engulfing candle here, so that would have been an early clue. Got above the 21 to 50 day moving averages. When did our signals, you know, and our signals got this right, by the way. So we had an ERI back here confirmed by a TSI crossing the 20 line. Uh, where do they have that here? And I'd say this one. 
and here sort of pull back that's it's a it's a sloppy one i don't know that's a tough one but we got a key and a bell the bell got it right you guys so these are some things we want to kind of build scanners for and just so we're watching these things can't watch them all but let's see that thing pulling back i told you i told you anyway um where were we? Uh, Ethereum. So Ethereum, uh, this is a take profit day. I, I would, uh, and certainly with FOMC tomorrow, you guys, this could be, you know, I wouldn't be chasing anything today. I would be watching very closely on FOMC and uh, I'll give you pointers tomorrow. And for those of you in M3 Active Trader, this does look bullish. What I might do though is uh, put on a trade. I've been waiting to get back into Ethereum in my IRA. This looks good here. We could close here near the end of the day, bullish engulfing candle. Uh, even though it's a bit overbought, we did have a bearish ERI here though. And we're a bit topped out. So I'm tempted. I won't go all the way in. This is where I'll leg into a position on Ethereum. And uh, But it's this was very strong resistance here that we punched up above. And so... I might go halfway in on Ethereum here and just that's one to hodl. So that's Ethereum. If you guys have any thoughts on that, uh, we could see uh, eGold. Somebody wants to look at. We can certainly look at these tomorrow here in the Active Trader. Uh, Adam, I, I'm not looking great below the 2150, but I want to have my alert set kind of back above here. So that's how you can read these. Total market cap. Let's just jump there for a minute. Uh, so I just got an alert on something else. Okay. Uh, total market cap looking interesting here above key resistance level. Well, is it above? Let's maybe redraw this and see. It's it's right at resistance though. We could see a big sell off tomorrow, you guys. Just be careful. This could be the pump before the news. Uh, we want to know. I want to know when the total market cap kind of gets up a little higher. So I'm going to set an alert there. But, you know, look, these we could go either way here with these things. And uh, we want to see what happens tomorrow. Like I said, let's see. So that's Adam. AVAX not looking good yet. OXT. Let's see. You wanted to look at Eagle tier. Um, cup. Well, I don't see cup and handle here. Alex uh well it's sort of but this is an odd looking cop here basically i see a downtrending channel that's failed and rejecting hard so uh if this was i, I do like eagle that was my pick i think it was uh december of 2021 so this thing here has got to get back up above honestly eagle i want to see it at 55 before i consider it myself i like to buy into strength me crazy but uh it's just it's in a downtrend still so um basic attention token not much more to see helium i did want to look at so you know um let's see. helium came down to this lower trend channel we were wondering if that would happen uh, I, I you know back down around 95 cents if it gets down again and starts creating, uh, creating some support down there i like it let's take a look at our indicators you know this is something Again, to put some money in helium on when our indicators go green. You know, it's, it's moving over to Solana. They weren't too happy about that. Um, but if, if it starts to hold down these areas, come back up and our indicators are all green. The ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. I think uh, helium could be one. Could be one is maybe partially a lottery ticket. The move, excuse me, the lottery, the move over to Solana is not uh, necessarily a good move and people aren't really happy about it. But uh, Algo's looking good and uh, ADA, let's see, actually Algo isn't looking good. I was looking down here, green, green. Uh, but you guys can see, we want to look for signs of strength above the 21 and 50. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got for you guys this week. We went a bit long. So, uh, but again, if you'd like to, we're going to unpack this a little bit deeper tomorrow in the the m3 active trader class that's moonstream.io slash m3 for more information and we'll unpack here we've got uh some interesting setups happening so join me tomorrow we'll go look at that we'll do less news we'll unpack more of these and of course our basket of coins so all right everybody and uh just kind of see how xrp closes but i think that thing sells off and to some degrees, maybe pops up higher tomorrow, hits the upper range of the golden pocket, and then it kind of rolls over. 
if you guys are uh, gunslingers, you want to short that, but I would just be very careful with the news. Uh, however, you know, we've seen this kind of behavior here, so it's a risky play, but, um, you know, if it extends far enough above the Bollinger, then then I'm more comfortable doing it. And when I'm doing that, I'm looking at shorter term time frames and uh, not we don't have time to get into it today. But one of my favorite day trading sort of new patterns here on the 15 minute is this uh, 15 minute VWAP with standard deviations. It tends to uh, hit the one range unless it's in a trending market, though, as market conditions change, this one's. Uh, it's, I don't have time to unpack it. We'll we'll cover this tomorrow on Active Trader for those of you interested. But um, yeah, be very careful uh, shorting anything right now, Rick. And uh, unless it just gets really extended up in those ranges, and if you do, don't use high margin and be and be ready to take profits and get out. So, all right, everybody, thanks uh, for your questions and the none of this, of course, is financial advice. All educational purposes only. And uh, hopefully that was helpful. So anyway, thanks very much and uh, have a good day. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.